Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Tully, President and Executive Writing Coach with Defend and Publish. Welcome to Episode 43, Five Steps to Effective Research Collaborations. I don't know about you, but many of uh, my favorite projects have actually been collaborative work. So uh, one of the things that I find really exciting about doing this kind of work is that I think about projects in new ways. Um, I, I enjoy the exchange of ideas about writing, looking how different folks um, compose on their own writing projects. And you know, in general, just getting an academic boost that sometimes doesn't happen with solo authored work. At the same time, many of us recognize that collaborations are a lot of work. A lot of times they go wrong. A lot of times, um, just like it back in the group project in school where there was always somebody in the class that didn't do their portion of the work, we have the same problems with our academic collaborators. Um, I've been very fortunate that that has not happened to me in many of my collaborations, but some are better than others, for sure. I mean, there's certainly um, collaborative partners that are absolutely wonderful to work with. Um, one of my favorite pieces that I did a very long time ago was um, with a friend, uh, two friends of mine, Dr. Christine Blair and Dr. Angela Haas. We wrote a, a wonderful article together about mentors and masters. And it's a long, you know, you can check it out. I'll stick it in the show notes. But that collaboration worked really, really well because we, we wrote together and we were able to do that. But we were also able to talk about the ideas and really think together how we wanted the language of that writing to happen. The reality is though, many collaborations are, are kind of set up as um, partnerships in a way where everybody does their own thing and then somehow the collaborative piece is gonna come together. And so what I wanna walk through today are five strategies that I think might help um, at the get-go if, if these are established from the beginning to make sure that the collaboration has a better chance of success. And for this one, I definitely want to give a little bit of a shout out to my friends at University of Leeds, um, who did a, a collaboration on, or a, a workshop on collaboration for um, the social sciences and the humanities. And we talked through many of these issues in great detail, um, along with many other strategies. But these are the five that I think for a quick, if you're listening to this podcast episode today, a quick hit and run, you might have a, a collaborative um, experience coming up. These are five things that I would argue that you need to keep in mind um, before starting an academic collaboration. So the first one would be define what the collaboration is for this particular project. One of the things that's happened now that more of us are collaborating, you know, across disciplines, across, you know, countries, across um, different areas of research is that we found out, we find that um, we might be thinking collaboration is one way all the time. And certainly it varies by project, it varies by researcher personality, um, it certainly varies by the goals of whatever the writing is, or you know, if it's an article, if it's a book, it definitely would change. And so defining that collaboration from the beginning also means defining what it might look like. And so here's where I think an initial meeting is very helpful to hash out these ideas, to think about, okay, are we all going to write our own sections on this project? and then merge them together in a Google Doc, because the initial problem that comes up with that type of writing is that it almost always sounds choppy and someone needs to be, I always call this the smoother, the person that can kind of smooth all the voices over and blend them together. Um, so certainly that's one. Um, another option might be that everybody has a different section that they're working on, meaning as part of the research. So maybe one person is running a, an experiment while another person is writing up some of the results and another person is checking to make sure the methodology is sound. Not all the tasks in a collaboration are necessarily writing tasks, nor should they be. And so here's a spot where it's very important to make sure with all of the collaborators, and again, we could be including colleagues, we could be including our graduate students or um, several graduate students working together, everybody's role needs to be defined from the beginning. And it seems, it seems obvious, but this tends to be the biggest problem. Um, and this is where I think many of the issues with um, entanglements over who is the, you know, how is the, um, the authorship list going to go on the publication also need to be sorted at this time. 
So, and this is the spot where really disagreements need to be hashed out because if they can't be hashed out, the collaboration shouldn't move forward unless there's you know, some essential reason why it should. But sometimes you might find from that meeting, as I found in one collaboration I was invited to do, after I had the meeting, I, did, I, did, I knew I did not want to do that collaboration because the um, folks that wanted to do it were very fuzzy on these issues. And I knew that it's not even that, that you might have a hostile relationship or things are unfriendly or people are fighting over authorship, but what will happen is that the collaboration is going to take a lot longer than you thought it would. And while we're on that note, a side tangent, collaborations never, never save time. Um, there are many, many other benefits, but saving time on completing something, thinking that two authors are faster than one author is sort of the wrong way to go about it. And many people I'm sure can chime in with their own experiences on our Twitter about collaborations, but that, that is one, they, they don't save time, but they're going to take even longer than they need to if everything is fuzzy and it's not clear what people are doing. So that first one about defining what the collaboration looks like and everybody's roles within it is essential. Um, a second one that I, I really like, the last, I did a wonderful um, collaboration with Anna Sharman and Sarah Rui. So shout out to those two, two friends for our presentation um, for the Researcher to Reader Conference in London. And in that collaboration, we had regular meeting times. And even though we were in, you know, relatively different places, different types of positions. Um, certainly, you know, we were collaborating across um, two different time zones between the Eastern Standard Time and then uh, London time. It just, you know, it worked really well because even though we had some challenges to work, we're able to keep a regular meeting time and that was, that was very essential. Um, another thing that really helped with the, re the regular meeting time is that we all had um, tasks we needed to complete by the reading, the, regular meeting time, and that made sure the collaboration was moving forward. So you may not actually need to meet regularly to talk all that much, but a 15 minute check-in with the goal of always having your work done by the time you have that 15 or 30 minute check-in, make sure that the work gets done on all sides. So I, you know, I knew that my other two collaborators were going to come with everything ready, and so I was ready as well. And so that, that definitely helped make the collaboration go forward. Um, a third one that I would say is that I have now thought about projects in a way where I think they should always have somebody we call the project manager. And, I, and this is something, again, when we're talking about defining roles, making sure that someone is a, um, taking on that role is important. And what I mean by a project manager is someone that's going to set the meeting agenda send out the uh, link to the Zoom so everybody can talk to each other, um, check on the stages of the project, communicate with the publisher. And I would argue that that should be something considered in authorship order. Certainly a manager you know, doesn't mean that that person becomes in your discipline of first author's most important, doesn't mean they get the first author slot for that. But I do think it should be taken into account if they're taking in if they're doing some of the labor for the collaborators. And sometimes this is a great role for people that like to have a little bit more control because in collaborations, a lot of times you don't have control over what your co-authors are writing or they're doing. And so um, having someone that's the very organized person that likes to do that type of labor, um, that can be a way to kind of keep them feeling like they have some control over the project, but also keep everybody else on track. And I know that sometimes I volunteered to be the project manager and sometimes not, but I always suggest it when we have the, um, the meetings, you know, with a new, to start a new collaboration, because I think that the collaboration works much better if we know who's sending out the meeting if for nothing else, I know on one of my projects, I can look in my email and look for that person's name to find the last stage of what it was we were working on. And, you know, certainly email is not the best way to do collaboration, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, I would also say, and this is something that I talked to the faculty at Leeds about, but I also like in that initial meeting to talk about contingency. And here's why. Um, setting a contingency plan for what happens if one of the authors or one of the collaborators um, disappears, gets sick, doesn't complete the part of their project, is regularly not working well with the other members. I think it's important to have a brief conversation and at least it could be set up in a humorous way like, hey, I was just in this last collaboration that, that didn't go so well. Can we at least talk about what might happen here? Because then the expectations are set. 
So if you have somebody that maybe you really want to work with them, their research is great, but you're concerned that they may not follow through, then you've made it very clear, this is what's going to happen. If you don't follow through, we're going to proceed in this direction. And certainly that conversation would involve what happened to those part, um, what happens to those uh, parts of the project that that person was in charge of. But at least discussing it ahead of time also sets the stage that everybody is aware of what happens when part of the collaboration isn't complete. And that I think also just helps people stay on track a little bit because in, you know, not that you need to have a penalty, but at least it's clear that that everybody on the project knows, hey, if I don't do my part, I'm getting kicked off this project. They're not going to keep me. And I know for me, that would be very motivating. So that, that's another thing would be to establish a contingency. So um, the last thing that I want to say is that I've had a couple collaborations drag on forever um, just because everybody kept pushing things back or we all got busy and the collaboration fell to the bottom of the list as we all worked on our own individual projects. And so the other thing for that first meeting would be thinking about when is this project over? What is our ideal target rate or target date to get rid of this publication to make sure that we are completely finished with this project? But talking about that ahead of time gives everybody who's collaborating a sense of how long are we working on this thing together? Because even if you love your collaborators, everything's going great, you're not going to probably work with them forever because the idea is that you want to get some of that research out. I mean, if you're thinking about doing a publication and you might do this in two stages where you have a target date for the publication to go out, but then a, a note to revisit if you want to do anything else with it. If you maybe want to do a follow up article someday or do a conference presentation that could be treated as a separate project, but it doesn't just extend the collaboration into, you know, infinity. So hopefully these tips have been helpful for you as you've thought through some of your collaborations. And I would, I would argue, I would maybe keep that list of five the next time you do a collaboration, have it handy, and at least use it as a couple of talking points when you figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it. Happy writing.